Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, Module 4, Lesson 4, Direct Variation. After this lesson, you need to be able to derive the equation y equals mx from the slope formula and use direct variation equations to represent and solve real-world and mathematical problems. Let's learn. Direct variation. When the ratio of two variable quantities is constant, a proportional linear relationship exists. We saw this in Lesson 1. This proportional linear relationship is called a direct variation, and that constant ratio or slope or unit rate that we've been finding also has other names called the constant of variation or the constant of proportionality as you may have learned in seventh grade. The direct variation equation, y equals mx, in that m represents our constant of variation, which is also the slope and the constant of proportionality and the unit rate, etc. So m is what we're going to be focusing on finding here. How is our equation changing between our two variables? So let's look a little closer at direct variation. A direct variation is a linear relationship which the ratio of y to x is constant, and we call that m. We might say that y varies directly with x. In symbols, since m is our constant of variation, we can use it as y over x, or we might see it in the equation y equals mx, with m being our constant of variation, also known as our slope. Our equation here, y equals 2x in our graph, show we're still dealing with a straight line. And with these direct variation equations, they are proportional, so they do go through 0, 0. So first, let's look at how to derive our direct variation equation of y equals mx. The slope of our graph is m, which is found in our y equals mx. And since it's a proportional relationship, we know that it goes through the point 0, 0, meaning that it's a solution since it's on the line. We know that that's a solution because direct variation and proportional relationships always pass through 0, 0. So if we use 0, 0 to derive this formula, we can use our slope formula that we've learned about previously. y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 is our slope. If we replace one of the coordinates with 0, 0, what we end up doing is subtracting 0, so we're just left with the other coordinate, which is y and then x. In order to get our equation, we need to use our multiplication property and multiply both sides by x. On the left side, x divided by x ends up being 1, so I'm just left with y. My final equation ends up being y equals mx. So just by taking that slope formula and plugging in 0, 0, I can come up with my general equation of y equals mx. Going forward, you might not need to derive how to get that formula if you just remember what it is, but it is helpful to see how the two things are related. Take time to pause and reflect. Did you struggle with anything that was just covered in the learn? How do you feel when you struggle with math concepts and what steps can you take to help yourself understand those concepts? Pause the video now and write down your thoughts. Example 1. Write direct variation equations from graphs. The cost y of gymnastics lessons varies directly with the number of sessions x as shown in the graph. Write a direct variation equation to represent this relationship, then identify the constant of variation and interpret its meaning. So we can see here in our graph we have our cost as our change in y, our rise, and our number of sessions is our change in x, or our run. If we want to find our constant of variation, which in other name is a slope, then we can find using the graph by finding our rise over our run. So I am given two points here. If I make my slope triangle, I can see that it went up 10 and over 1. So the price went up $10 for one more session. So the slope of this line would then be 10 over 1, or just 10. 10 divided by 1 is 10. Now that I figured out that the slope is 10, I can quickly write my direct variation equation. I just take 10 and plug that in for m. So instead of m, I'm going to write 10. My direct variation equation is y equals 10x, with the only thing that we changed was our slope once we found it. Part B, find the constant of variation and interpret its meaning. So we just found the constant of variation was equal to the slope, which was 10 over 1, or 10. What did it mean in this context? 
it meant that the unit rate, that's another word that means constant of variation, was $10 per session. So if we look at this, if you're not sure exactly what it's meaning, 10 was our rise. Well, what unit is on the side for our rise? That is our cost. Our one was in our run section. What unit is going along the bottom? That is the sessions. So this was $10 for one session. And there's a quick way you can figure out what is it being talked about. Check your understanding, read through the situation, write the direct variation equation, and then interpret its meaning. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, your direct variation equation should be y equals 5x if we find the slope. So I'm just going to choose a couple points here, not necessarily right next to each other. We learned in the last lesson, slope triangles, any triangle will work. So 10 to 25 went up 15, 2 to 5 was 3, so 15 divided by 3, that was my rise over my run, is 5. So I have replaced m with 5. What's our constant of variation? It was five, that was our slope. What does it mean in this context? Every mile that you go farther away, that's what the distance is that's increasing, the time goes up by five seconds. So every mile farther, it's gonna take you five seconds longer to hear the thunder after you see the lightning. Take time to pause and reflect. In the example in the check, you found the constant of variation from a graph. Thinking about what you've learned in previous lessons, explain how you could find that constant of variation from words or a table if you are not given the graph, which sometimes you won't be. Pause the video now and write down your thoughts. Example 2. Write direct variation equations from words. The cost of bulk peanuts varies directly with the weight of the peanuts. At a local grocery store, two pounds of peanuts cost $5.80. Write a direct variation equation to represent this relationship. Then identify the constant of variation and interpret its meaning. So part A, write the direct variation equation. To do that, we need to find the unit rate, which is the slope, which is the constant of variation. It tells us $5.80 is for two pounds. So if I can find how much it is for one pound, that's my unit rate, which is the same as the slope. So $5.80 for two pounds, let's divide that. We would find that it's $2.90 for one pound. So the unit rate here is $2.90 per pound of peanuts. Now that we know our unit rate, that's our constant of variation. So we can plug it in for M into our equation. We have Y equals 2.9 or you could put 2.90 if you want to keep it consistent with the money aspect x so y equals 2.9 x that is your direct variation equation last what was our constant of variation we just found it that was 2.9 or two dollars and ninety cents that means that the cost per pound was two dollars and ninety cents check your understanding read through the situation and answer both parts pause the video now and complete the check Check your answer. First, the direct variation equation is y equals 750x. In order to find that unit rate or slope, we take our total. She is earning $3,000, and it took her four weeks to do that. So 3,000 divided by four is 750. That's how much she can earn in one week. Our constant of variation then is $750. In this context, that is how much she earns in one week. She earns $750 each week. Example three, write direct variation equations from tables. Aubrey is baking oatmeal cookies for the school carnival using the amounts shown in the table. The number of cups of flour varies directly with the number of cups of oats. Write a direct variation equation to represent this relationship, then identify the constant of variation and interpret its meaning. So first let's write our equation we can see all of our values here. We want to find how much the y value is changing comparing that to the x value. So how much is that changing compared to how much is it changing there? So in the y values, 
it went from four to eight. So end minus start, eight minus four. It went up four cups. For the same amount of change in flour, we had to go from two to four. The oats went up by two. So the slope of the line that this table would make is two over one or just two. Every time we increase our amounts of oats, we have to increase the amounts of flour twice as much. Now, in this situation, it happens to be the same as if you're multiplying across. So all of these are just multiplied by two, which happens to be the slope. I caution you to not use this method unless you are dealing with something that is direct variation or proportional, as we will see in future lessons that if the start value is slightly off, we're not starting at zero, zero, then this method will not work anymore. Find the change in y divided by the change in x. That's your better way to find your unit rate. So we found that our slope was 2. Let's put that in place of m. So y equals 2x. This is our direct variation equation. We have y equals 2x. What is the constant of variation and what does it mean? The constant of variation was our slope, which was 2. This means that the unit rate is 2 cups of flour for every 1 cup of oats. Or we could say that in this cookie recipe, there's twice as much flour as there are oats. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and use the table to answer both parts. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, the direct variation equation is y equals 45x. Our change in y, it went up 45 for one more lap. So this was just 45 change in the y over one, which is 45. y equals 45x once we replace that for m. So what's our constant of variation? It is 45, what we just found. What does it mean in this context? 45 is how long it took her to swim one more lap. So it took her 45 seconds to swim each lap.